Hello and welcome to another Sugar Effects tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use subtitles for Inside Final Cut Pro 10 using markers for the creation of the subtitles. As you can see, I am in Final Cut Pro and I have my final movie rendered in a brand new timeline. The process of creating uh, subtitles in any application is a very tedious and time-consuming process. My recommendation is that you get the script or a transcript, make sure that everything is typewritten before you start creating the markers. I have the script, this is a PDF format, and I need to create the subtitles for each entry. So right here I can select my first subtitle and make sure that I do a copy. And when I come here to my timeline, I make sure that I look for the moment in which I need to put that first dialogue. So let's suppose that it's right here. So I park the timeline marker right here in the appropriate location and I press the letter M to create a marker and then the letter M again in my keyboard to bring the actual marker dialog box. And it shows me the actual time code in which it was created and there is some text in here. I just simply paste command V to paste the actual subtitle. At this moment I have two different options. If I say done, then I have created what is called a standard marker. So if I double click, I can see that the marker that I selected is actually a standard. But there is another marker that we can use for the creation of subtitles, and that is the last chapter marker here. When I select that, notice that my marker not only changed color, but it added a little pin. That pin is going to allow me to set the duration for this marker. So if I select the chapter marker and I press done, now I can take that pin and move it to as long as needed for the actual duration. This is very important because if I were to select the standard marker and I said done, when I export the marker and I then bring it into the subtitles, subtitles will decode this marker as a marker without duration and it will give the duration depending on the number of characters that are within the actual subtitle. By selecting the chapter marker, I have the control, complete control of telling it is going to be long or short. If it is a few words, I can just place the, the pin exactly where I want it to end, not more or not less. So if you are able to control this with the chapter markers, I suggest that you use chapter markers all the time. But if you can't, the standard markers are okay. As I said, they will be decoded and they will be provided a specific length by the subtitles plugin automatically depending on the number of characters. Now we can go into my PDF once again and then I can select the next text, copy it and come back in here, look for that position in time press the letter M twice to bring the dialog box and again paste so we can see the actual text in there and now again the option to select standard or chapter marker so let's suppose that I want standard this time the as I said subtitle will decode that later and will give us an automatic duration now for the third subtitle I can do the same exact thing and notice that in here I have a subtitle, so this is a longer text, so that means that it might need actually two lines of text in the subtitle. So I'm going to show you how to add a second line using the markers. So I'm going to copy this text and I'm going to go back to the timeline here in my markers and I will select the exact time code where that subtitle is supposed to go and press the letter M twice so I can bring the dialog box for the markers and right here I can paste. But when I paste, notice that there is an additional line that is created. I need to make sure that I don't have all these extra spaces. Okay. And now when I have the entire text right there, I want to decide where I am going to put the line break. Maybe right here would be perfect. So if right here is perfect, then I'm going to have to put what is called a style tag. So we have added some style tags whenever you are creating markers that require a second line for the subtitle. So in here, what I'm going to do is create a larger than bracket, the capital letter R for return, and then the lower than bracket. So by adding this tag, these three letters, now I am telling this subtitle that whenever it is decoded later, it will actually be a two-line subtitle. 
Now, in this case, I'm going to select the chapter marker because I want to be able to give the correct duration and press done and add the correct duration that I want. And that's how you create the subtitles one at a time. As I said in the beginning, this is a tedious and time consuming process. All right, so here I am almost done with my subtitles uh, creation. As you can see, I have placed markers, chapter markers all throughout the entire timeline and I'm ready to export my markers. When I am here in the timeline, I can go into File, Export XML, and I look for a specific place in my hard drive, and I have two options in here. Either export the current version 1.6 or the previous version 1.5. Either version will work. I'm going to use the current version, and the metadata view, I'm gonna just leave it as the default, which is general in here, and I'm going to save that. So what I just did was export all the markers to the hard drive. Now it's time for me to bring the subtitles plugin and put it right here on the top track of the timeline. Some people might have problems understanding this. For some beginners, they usually try to bring the title and put it right on top of the video. If you do this by mistake, the actual application is going to ask you if you wanna replace the entire video with that element. At this moment, you're gonna say cancel because you don't wanna replace the entire video with a title element. So you bring the title and you put it right here on top, kind of like on the top track of your timeline. Notice that now we still have the default subtitles that came with the plugin, but now we're going to press on the button that says edit text input. You can do it here or you can do it in the actual uh, parameters, edit, and then right here, we can click on the import from file. And then we look for our uh, XML that we just exported. And we're going to import that file. That file imports all of the markers, as you can see there. This is not easily editable, as you can see here. This is a little complicated. So try not to edit your uh, timing or anything like that in XML, unless you understand exactly what you're doing. Now that I imported all of that, I'm going to say OK. And now we can see right here in the info box that I have zero subtitles and the format that I'm using as an input is the user time code. And that is why I only see zero subtitles because the format that I'm using is actually a Final Cut Pro XML format. So I need to go into my parameters and under input format, I'm going to select Final Cut Pro X XML markers. So when I do that, now all this information changes and now I have 144 subtitles and I have the correct input right here in color green. So now if I move around, I can see that my subtitles are perfectly created in the timeline. So right now it's time for me to change the appearance of my text. Instead of this Helvetica, I can usually use something different. Let me just try this one or maybe some other font. Okay, that's uh, a little uh, crazy, but it works. I can change the color of that to a yellow, for example, and I can make my text box a little more larger here and reposition this to where I want it and so on. So now all of my text is now created with that appearance that I created. If I am happy with what I just did, I can turn off the info box and then make sure that everything is synchronized correctly. If you want to see more of these videos, please visit our YouTube channel at Sugar Effects TV and let us know if you have any comments or questions about certain techniques or specific workflows that you would like to use. So until next time, thanks for watching.